let us understand the golden salmon attack and, and this attack has been very important lately in lieu of the attack uh, that solar wind produced i mean that gave access to active directory since the credentials of ad were in that tool and when that tool was compromised the guys had access to the uh, active directory service and they were able to do this golden attack and that's how they were able to read you know people's uh, emails that were on the cloud and download information on buckets on AWS etc so how does the federation services work well when you have when you want to federate an access uh, and you have all your users in your active directory service defined the last thing that you want to do is to replicate those directories into your cloud providers not only that's a security exposure but that's something that it makes the whole thing far more difficult so what you do instead is that let's say that the first step is that user Matt and that's what we will use in the attack authenticates to Active Directory maybe he uses multi-factor authentication you put all the security in the world to make sure that Matt is really Matt once he has been authenticated to Active Directory because Matt exists in this AD he said okay I know this is Matt Matt goes to a portal okay that's step number two Matt goes to a portal where all the accesses for federated services exist for this company and some of those are going to be uh, in Azure and AWS etc so let's actually show you while I do this how something like that will work in this demo system we prepare here so I'm here on that uh, portal and again this is a very simplified version of all this and say well I'm going to sign in into the following site I only have this set up with AWS but you will have here a list of all the things that you actually want to do and you actually click sign in and you need to present your credentials to your to validate to Active Directory that Matt is really Matt so here is Matt at demo.local I'm going to put Matt's password here And when that is done, a summer session gets generated, sent to AWS, and as you see here, I'm in AWS login as Matt, and I can look at this S3 bucket, and I can do all that data. That is the normal flow. And that summer assertion is nothing more than an XML digitally signed to with a with a certificate with the ADFS signing certificate that tells AWS hey trust me this is Matt I send him that way and then AWS says oh sure I'll, I'll, I'll give Matt whatever access he gets and the last step of this will be that from AWS there are going to be a message that indicates that Matt logged on a to AWS I completely forgot this should be step number five sorry that's not reading clearly me select a finer pen I forgot to mention that there is a step number three and that's key that when Matt authenticated to AD, AD, ADFS when we log in there are two events that are going to be sent to curator the events ID are 1200 and 1202 and those indicate that that's the normal way in which things happen so on step number three he authenticated and Curator knows okay our maths authenticated step number four the summer session gets sent and then number five is when we get that that indication so as you can see if we get the step number five which is those that, that Matt log in into AWS without previously having received these two events 1200 and 122 that that indicates something 
strange. And that's precisely the golden SAML attack. And here we are in the log activity tab in Curator. We put a filter when the username contains any of that. And here we, hit, we see those two events. The first event is event ID 1200. That indicates the normal authentication to Mr. Matt. And the other event is the validation of the credentials and is event ID 12002. So that's the normal flow when things are good. All we need to complete this good cycle is to wait for the AWS logs to come and those takes around 15 minutes to come because of the poll interval that we have set up here. And uh, so I'm going to pause the video until we get the normal authentication logs from AWS saying, hey, Matt, just log in. While we wait for those logs to come, if you go into the X-Force Exchange and you search put the word golden SAML, you will get this collection. This has two things. One is this file that you can download which contains the rule that will fire when the run sequence from the attacker will take place. And also if you click here on this link, you will go into a fantastic explanation that our Bright Mutas has created that explain how a SAML assertion works uh, for, uh, for this uh, attack and all the steps that we actually, I actually went through with to these uh, steps with Mutas and we actually collected the information that the attacker needs and we are going to use that uh, shortly after. And here is, uh, all these uh, steps are explaining great deal of uh, detail in here. But I'm not going to go through those uh, because that will make the video way too complicated and way too long. But here they are for those who are interested in those details. So here are the events that we were waiting for that came from the AWS instance uh, that Mutas created. Well, now I'm going to do what the attackers have been doing. Because I, with all that description that Mutas so well put, and with it, we obtain the capability of signing SAML assertions. So I'm going to be sending a SAML assertion with a user that doesn't even exist in Active Directory called Tiger. And then you're going to see, I'm going to do that from a Linux machine, and you're going to see that I will gain access to the AWS. Well, first I will prove that I don't have access to S3, then I send the summarization. I now have access to the S3 bucket, and you'll see that Curator will receive the, the, the fact that user Tiger log into, into AWS, but there's no event 12.00 and 12.02 for Tiger, therefore an offense will fire. So I'm here in a Linux machine, happens to be my Kali machine, but I'm not using any anything from Kali here. And I'm invoking the history here to the command uh, that I have that. And well, I'm on the wrong directory, but let me read the, explain the command. Basically, I'm using a tool called Shimit that was created by the guys from CyberArk when they discovered the golden attack. And uh, here are the parameters for the actual login. And I'm using my certificate uh, to produce the SAML assertion with this Shimit tool and that gets sent uh, to AWS. So let me actually, I believe that my problem is that I need to be into the desktop directory and then go into Shimit. And let me actually uh, invoke that command again, and this time it, uh, it should work, right? In fact, I should have done before the, to prove the fact that uh, that if I do AWS before the attack, S3, and I do an LS, uh, 
that I could, and now I can see it, if I would have done this before the attack, you would have seen that I would say you don't have credentials to to get that from S3. So forgive me for skipping that part. But uh, this is actually going straight with the summon assertion into AWS. Again, Tiger doesn't even exist in Active Directory, but AWS said, fine, you have a valid uh, uh, summon assertion, so I'll let you in. And, and, and the, this attack is so nasty because in order for you to recover, besides all the things that you need to recover from from this attack, you will need to reset all the credentials with all of your federation. So that's going to generate some significant uh, disruption, but you definitely have to do that. I'm going to wait 15 minutes until the time passes for the rule to evaluate that receives the AWS from this Tiger thing, and there's no events from the normal authentication to AD uh, for that Tiger guy. So pausing the video until then. And after those 15 minutes pass, actually I wait a little longer than that, when we put this filter user contain any of Tiger, we see that we got two events that contribute to an offense because they are with the user Tiger that did not have those two initial normal events. And here you have the corresponding offense. Now you know what the golden attack is and how to set your curator rule to detect when that happened. There is an additional video that I show on how you make sure that you get ADFS logs getting into Curera in case you don't have those already set up.